Can you see beyond? Beyond what? You better stay tuned so you can find out how. Hi everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me again on Insight. We're learning how to get insight. We're learning how to see into situations so that we can come out with answers, so that we can come out with the right thing to do at the right time. Because so many times we're superficial and we don't really want to deal with reality. And don't tell me that you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to, real, <laughs> I'm going to deal with reality. Not all the time. So what we got to do now, though, is we got to be wide awake in this nation. And we've got to see, wait a minute, something's coming down the pike and it doesn't look good. We've had some rough years these last three years. But I can tell you, the enemy has some worse ones ahead of us if we allow him to. What are you going to allow him to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to stop it? How are, are you just going to like, well, I don't know, come see, come sell, whatever's going to be. He's going, no, no, we're not. I'm going to teach you today. I hope you get your pen and pencil and, and your paper and your Bible because I want to talk to you today about the power of decree. Now, I'm going to talk more about decrees, but I want to get into it just a little bit more so that you can begin to understand I mentioned before about confession. Confession is just saying the same thing over and over until it becomes a reality to us. And so I got Barbara here. She was a kindergarten teacher. And so when she teaches, like she has these little flashcards and she shows them an A and she goes, A, 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 uh, A, uh, apple, apple, A, 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 uh, A. Uh. What is that repetitive? That's just confessing. And we would, I, I remember when, I know you don't believe this, I remember when I was in kindergarten and I learned through repetitive and then I taught my kids the same way. So confession is like that. We see the object, we hear the object, we say the object. And so like by the stripes of Jesus, I believe I am healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I believe I receive that. And we're just saying it over and over so that those words begin to go down inside of us and take root. Now, now don't get upset about this. Let me, Listen to me, okay? But our body and our mind is like dirt, you know? So we're made out of dirt, so it's kind of like dirt. And so you take a seed and you put it in the dirt. And after it stays in there a little while, and if you put some water and fertilizer on it and you take care of it, make sure you get all the weeds off of it, that, that thing will actually start growing whatever it was you planted. That's what confession is. We're just like saying, Father, I believe this and, and I want to meditate on this and I want to see that you said that Jesus Christ had taken my sickness and disease. That's confession, confession, confession. Now, of course, there's proclamations. Proclamations are things that are written out. They're going to become a law, but they're not a law. They're not written in the law yet. They're just being proclaimed, pro proclaimed, proclaimed. And so then let's go ahead and get on to uh, decrees. Decrees are laws. It is, it is a law. It is a fact. Now, the way we're going to get a decree is we have to have it from the written word of God, okay? And we can also have decrees from what prophets are decreeing for our nation. And so I'm just going to give you a few scriptures, so get ready to write them down. A decree actually becomes a law. It is a law. It is going to work. Now, a decree, like, for instance, Psalm 2 and verse 7. Psalm 2 and verse 7, and it just talks about, I make the decree that he is my son. He's going to be my son. But it's a decree. It's not just a statement. It's just not like, well, I think the sun's shining. It's not like that. It's like, no. This is a fact. And so that's a decree. And the one I really like, I like them all, <laughs> but the one I really like is Job twenty two twenty eight. And I'm sure you're familiar with Job twenty two twenty eight. It's like, make a decree. And when you make a decree, it shall be established. Make a decree and it shall be established. And I'm going to just take something just normal that we all understand here in the United States. We have these speed laws. Now, back way back, back years and years ago, 
our speed laws were 70 miles an hour. So there was this decree that was set up that said, this is a law. It You can drive 70 miles an hour. Then they put the sign up there. Well, I, I remember when I was 14 and I was learning to drive, I drove 70 miles an hour. Can you believe that? Whoa, I wouldn't want kids to do that today. But anyway, so then we come along. And I don't know what their reason was. They said their reason was, I don't know, saving gas or something. So then they changed that same speed law to 55 miles an hour. So they had to go in and undo the 70 miles an hour law and then say, here's a higher law, a decree. They still had to put those little signs out there. You can only drive maximum of seven of 55 miles an hour. That was a law. You couldn't drive 70 anymore. You had to drive no faster. You could not. You were not allowed to drive faster than 55 miles an hour. That's a decree. So a decree is something that they write it into a law. And once it's written into a law, then it's enacted or it becomes law. And so that's what a decree is. That's what Job was talking about. He said, you make a decree and it shall be established. When they put those little speed signs out there, it was established. Hey, you can go 70 miles an hour. Hey, don't drive any faster than 55. Got it? So that's what a decree is. A decree is a law, and we have to abide by those laws. So if the law is 55 and you're driving 70, the police are going to give you that little ticket thing, and you're going to get to pay it. <laughs> so, all right, so the next thing I want to talk about is Proverbs 8 and verse 15. That's that's a good one. And I'm, as time goes on, I'm going to share more and more about these decrees. But um, Proverbs 8, 15 talks about, he says that, kings and rulers will make a decree all right jesus is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords so we know that he has made us kings and priests we understand that under under the law under the spiritual law so we actually can make decrees we can set up laws another law i want to give you an example of is uh, <clears throat> esther Okay, when Esther had uh, the law that was set, the, the king set the law with his signet ring, boom, here we go. Okay, and it said they can go out and they can kill all the Jews. They're going to kill all the Jews. That was a law. So Esther knew a strategy. Now follow what I'm saying. This is so important because laws, you have to have a strategy to change laws satan has set up certain laws there are laws for instance out of your mouth life or death is going to be spoken out of your mouth that's a law it's going to work it uh, the law of gravity works for anybody if a person gets up on a 10-story building and they jump down the gravity is going to take over and it's going to work and you go well you know the law of lift and thrust and an airplane supersedes gravity. But did you know it only supersedes it for a little while? That plane is going to have to land. It's got to come down. It's not going to stay up there forever. You understand that? So a decree is, is like that. So we have to have a, a higher law. So the king told Esther, he said, well, then why don't you write your own law? So she made a law that was higher than the first law. And the higher law said, hey, you can defend yourself. All of the Jews can defend themselves. That's a higher law. Now, there was still going to be a battle, but they could defend themselves. With the first law, they were not allowed to defend themselves. So that's a decree. So she made a higher decree. Now, I'm getting to a point. Are y'all ready? You, you follow me, right? I'm making sense to you, okay? So we'll make sure. Leave me some notes and let me know that I'm making sense to you. All right, because we have made some really dumb decisions and we've made some bad laws in our United States. We made some bad decisions. We made some all kinds of goofy things we should not have done. We ended up with some of these laws. Okay, you got it? But God said, 
as a king or ruler, you can make a decree, which is a higher law. So I want to show you how a higher law works. A higher law is the one that is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The higher law is the written word of God. The higher law is when even a prophet begins to prophesy, thus saith God, because it says in Amos that God does nothing until he talks to his prophets about it. So he takes his words, God takes his words and he puts it in his prophet's mouth. That's the same as if God himself is saying it. So out goes his prophecy. That's a higher law than the one that's working down here. We have a law that is saying it's a law of nature. There's a law of nature. There's a law of everything. I Just like I said, you know, uh, gravity works. And so, but God said, I want you to learn a new language. I want you to learn a new way of speaking. I want you to learn a new way of communication. And this new way of communication is a higher law. It's a decree because it is a spiritual law. Are y'all getting this? It's a spiritual law. It's a law that God Almighty himself has set. All right, that law has to do with the power of the blood of Jesus. So how can Satan thinks he's ruling everything, thinks he's running everything, good night. Look at all the stuff that's happening. Look at the goofy things that people are thinking and saying today. And we, we're hearing on the news all the time about people that are ending up in jail and they really didn't do hardly anything. And we're like, what is going on here? Satan is running around with his laws that we, through a period of time, has allowed him to do. But now I'm telling you, God is waking up the body of Christ. We have spiritual laws that we can absolutely enact and make them work. You need to learn. You can speak a higher language. You can speak the language of the blood of Jesus Christ. That is a higher law. Revelation 12, 11. Jesus himself, Jesus Christ himself. Are you getting this? Jesus himself, the Lord of Lords. Jesus himself said, all right, you're dealing with the devil. Let me tell you how to deal with Satan himself. Testify, speak, decree, make decrees about the power of my blood and my resurrection. It defeats Satan every single time. And I'll just go really fast to tell you back over here, we've got to get strategies to change laws that have been made in our nation. We've got to get some strategies. We've got to learn how to get a different language. This fussing and carrying on and backbiting and being mad and offended and carrying on with each other, that is not going to work. That is the law of Satan. Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Boy, I didn't mean to be so hard. Am I being too hard? I'm being, I don't mean to be giving you a spanking. I'm trying to wake you up. Listen, we've got a sliver of time. We've got to get this higher law operational right now. God said, I'm giving you strategies. And the way this strategy is that kings and rulers can make a decree that's on a spiritual side. This is, that's what Job 22 says, that we have the ability to establish a decree and that decree is absolutely going to be established. And in, in fact, it's in Jeremiah 5.22. God established a decree. 
this is really interesting. I love this one. I found this years and years ago. I thought this was amazing. Go to the ocean. Doesn't matter if you go to California or Florida, wherever you go. And there's the ocean. Here comes these waves. These waves come in and they go, here's the sand. Here comes the waves. And the waves go, watch this sand. I'm going to take you over. I'm going to take you over. Even if a tsunami comes along, I'm going to take you over. I'm going to take you over. But in Jeremiah, it says God made a decree. And the decree was the sand says, you got to go back. You got to go back. You got to go back. Even if that ocean comes and it's a tsunami and it wipes things out, do you know it still goes back? Because the higher law that God himself set with that sand. You getting this? The higher law that God set is going to make that water go back. You need to learn this. You need to get this on the inside of you. Get it down on the inside. Wait a minute. I'm working with higher laws. I'm working with the decree that God Almighty himself has set. God Almighty has the power to change time. God Almighty has the power and the ability to change circumstances and situations. God Almighty himself says, no, not today. God Almighty himself can, just like that sand, even though that water comes and boom, here it goes. That sand goes, you just going to go back. You going to go back. You got to go back. And so Pastor Kuhneman, several years ago, had a prophecy, put it back. Well, it's time now for us to start saying, put it back, put it back in your personal life, put it back in your personal finances, put it back in your ministry, put it back in with your family, put it back in your community, put it back. Just like when they took the Ten Commandments down off the wall, put it back. So why? Because there's a higher law and the higher law is it's the language you speak. What language are you speaking? Doom, gloom, oh my God, oh Lord, all I have is this and that and the other thing and I don't know what I'm going to do and how is it going to be? That's not what Esther said. Esther went to the king and said, hey, help me. I, I got to do something. He said, then you make a law. Yes, they had to fight. That's exactly where we are right now. We are having to fight in this nation. We're having to fight for our freedom. We're having to fight for our children. We're having to fight for this upcoming election. We're having to fight against some of these crazy laws. We're having to fight. We, yes, we're in a fight. But let's go with this higher language, the language of the blood of Jesus Christ. That language, the language of the blood, Hebrews 12, 24 and 25, the blood of Jesus speaks mercy. Abel's blood cried out from the ground, vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. Do you have any concept? It's, it's mind-boggling. If we went from Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the blood that is in the ground that is screaming out for mercy, I mean, screaming out for vengeance right now, from that time to right now, do you have any idea how much blood is in the ground that's screaming out for vengeance? But 2,000 years ago, Satan says, I got him. I shut his mouth. He cannot speak that language of the blood anymore. Jesus cannot speak. His mouth is shut. They beat his face. They beat his mouth. His tongue is cleaving, cleaving to the top of the roof of his mouth. And he finally died. And when he did, Satan said, I got it. I knew. I knew I, I, I just nail him to the cross. But he didn't count on something. As his blood came down, Jesus' blood came down off of his body, onto that cross, onto the earth it was saying see mercy mercy the language of the blood 
is speaking mercy, 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 mercy in our nation, mercy for our children, mercy for the elderly, mercy for Israel, mercy, mercy for the people in Africa, mercy for the people in Saudi Arabia, mercy all over the whole earth. Do you hear his voice speaking? It's a higher law. It's the law of God Almighty Himself. It's His law. And His law works. Satan couldn't even overcome Jesus in the wilderness. Every time he did, you know what he said? He said, hey, you're hungry? You've been out here for 40 days and take these stones and turn them to bread. Don't you know Jesus could have done that? He could have called an angel and said, hey, bring me a loaf of bread and peanut butter and jelly. I need a sandwich. And it could have happened. But you know what, what Jesus said to him? Knock it off. I don't want to hear your word, Satan. I understand how to live by the word, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He was overcoming a trial and a temptation. That's exactly what we can do. We can change this whole thing. I don't mean to be preaching so hard at you, but I'm telling you one thing. We've got to change some things. When Isaiah went to Hezekiah and said, hey, get your stuff together. I mean, you're out of here. Your history, you're going to die. That's the end of it. A prophet gave him a word. And Hezekiah said, no, I want to turn my face to the wall, the wall of salvation. He turned his face to the wall and he said, God, grant me time. And so God told Isaiah, get back in there. Tell him we're going we're gonna to do something for him. And so what did he do? A higher law. A higher law. You're going to die, Hezekiah. Hezekiah repented. And here comes this higher law. Isn't this powerful? This higher law came. And the higher law granted him what? 15 more years. And when Hezekiah got in that big fight, it was 185,000 Assyrians. This is that when they looked out there, it looked like the grains of sand on the seashore of life. There were so many. It was just like, just think about it. Oh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? A higher law. Come on. A higher law, a higher law. Hezekiah said, help me. Help me, God. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. That was not an easy battle. In fact, you ought to hear Tim Sheets tell the, the history behind it. It was not an easy. It was not easy. But Hezekiah, can you hear my heart? I'm telling you. Can you hear me? Hezekiah cried out and God said, okay. I will enact a higher law. And the next thing you know is all of the enemy out there, one angel, one angel, one angel. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, you know, I could call a myriad of angels. One angel, one angel caused a mess to happen with the Assyrians and they ended up killing themselves, each other. I, just come on, get a picture of that. You ought to see a movie in your mind of what I'm saying. One angel. Do you realize that when you enact this higher law, just call them one angel, boom, all of a sudden. Don't you know everything could change? Why are we so defeated? Jesus has made us more than conquerors. And now in this lifetime, we always win. We never lose. The devil always loses and he never wins. So how, what are we going to do about this nation? What are you going to do about this nation? I'm doing my part. I got an assignment in 91 about this nation. I've been doing it faithfully ever since 91. And I'm still doing it because I know God told me in 91 what I would see. I'm living in it right now at my age. And he showed me even further down what was going to be happening. What can you change? How can you turn this thing? Time and time again, David, zig, zigzag. I mean, think about it. They lost everything. They were exhausted. They were tired. His men was mad at him. His men was going to beat him up. 
And so David goes, okay, I got to go in and inquire of the law of the Lord. And so he goes in and he asks the Lord, he said, what do I need to do? They, <laughs> the Lord said, stop whining, stop crying. Get up, get out of here and get back everything that belongs to you. And there was a few men that says, David, I'll go with you. God's always looking for a few good men and women and children who know the word of God. And when God has something, he says, okay, okay, let's learn this new language. Let's learn to speak differently. I'm not talking about getting out there and being a nut and saying stupid stuff and getting yourself into trouble. I'm talking about learning a new language, the language of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about learning the language of the blood. The blood of Jesus says that I'm justified. The blood of Jesus says I've been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus says I, I belong to him. The blood of Jesus says I have the riches of the mercies of God in my life. The blood of Jesus says I've been redeemed and bought back from the devil himself. Let the blood of Jesus begin to speak and speak and speak and speak and speak for you. And as that begins to happen, then you start getting built up on the inside. I've been forgiven. I'm innocent. There, I'm not guilty. There's no case pending against me. I am prosperous. The blood, I hear the blood of Jesus. What happens is you start getting more victory on the inside. You get stronger and stronger on the inside. And you start getting stronger. And the next thing you know, you're standing up like this and you're saying, uh-uh, not today, devil. Not today. Not today, the blood, the blood, the blood. And as you learn to do that, then God gets in there and he helps. What if he needs to send one angel? Well, okay, that takes care of 185,000 of them. If he needs to send two, he will. If he needs to send a whole army of them, he will. God is on your side. He is on our side and he intends on us maintaining our freedom in this United States. He intends on us stopping this onslaught of Satan himself trying to come and take us down. We know we've heard about these cells, sleeper cells and all that stuff. They can stay asleep, okay? Hello, anybody out there? All right, so we've been hearing about all these things that are happening. Then why don't we start doing something about it? Yes, you have to do something in the natural. I understand that. But I'm telling you, it's a spiritual fight and you have to win this with spiritual warfare. We're in a war. We've been hearing prophets talk about it. Chuck Pierce has been talking about a war for 10 years. We're in a spiritual war right now. You're in a spiritual war. Are you going to get up from there and do something about it? Are you going to make a change? I'm telling you, you can. You have the power of God working on the inside of you. Learn a new language. If you can't say it right, then put some duct tape over your mouth and keep it quiet till you can say it right. And I have done that myself. I guarantee you. I've even taken scotch tape off of my desk and put it over my mouth to make sure that I wasn't saying something stupid to open up the devil, open up the door for the devil. It's time to open up this. He's opened us up a door. It's, it's time now. We've got this door of opportunity. We have the time to be able to turn this whole nation around. Are you with me? Let me know. Make sure that you subscribe and get other people subscribing so you can be a digital evangelist. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> All right. God bless. I'll see you next time.